Okay, thank you, beautiful Maria, for coming to join me for this amazing Universal Mindset Technique session. How are you feeling today? Good, good. Awesome. So you have sent me some information and it's, it's basically focused around lack of motivation and procrastination that you've noticed um, around not only health, but maybe also spiritual practices and maybe other things that you know that you, you want to do or you should be doing, but that's not happening, right? That's right, yes. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the universal mindset technique to not only find out where that's come from and why that's there, but also to completely shift it so that you don't have that anymore. Now, okay. this is a really quick process. It's a very quick process. Um, literally, I'll ask you questions and you just then need to um, tell me the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. okay. So I am being told as I, as I'm talking that you have a do you have a very strong conscious mind a very strong yes <laughs> so sometimes when people have really strong conscious minds they're actually not speaking from what I call the soul level because that's what 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 I do is we work mainly on the soul level but I'll always know definitely the difference as to where the voice is coming from so. Um, I usually then just get around it some way to get to the truth, which is fine. So, so we're going to start off, um, and I'm already, I say I hate this, but I don't really hate it. I'm already being shown where this has all come from and everything else, but I need you to connect with it. So okay. um, I'll ask you, there's five different questions that I'll ask you, and um, that will then help us to get to the core of, of what's going on. So the first question is not really a question, but the first question is, you know, what is the issue, which is the lack of motiva motivation and procrastination in all areas. So tell me what feelings um, you experience when you notice that you're procrastinating and, and you've got that lack of motivation. Just like a big sign, oh, here we go again, sort of thing, you know, not being able to push through, knowing what I need to do, knowing what I want to do, knowing what is required of me. Yeah. And having that plan to do it, and then I don't do it. Yeah. So it's just frustration with myself. Great. With frustration with yourself, which then leads into beating yourself up. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and then it just goes on that cycle going around. I am being That's told that there is a hidden advantage to... Um, this procrastination and motivation so it's just giving us a little bit of an insight there so i'm just going to write that down just for me to keep in my back pocket um <clears throat> because we do need to work out what the advantage is as well mm. to then change that so it's not an advantage anymore <laughs> okay so the question number three or step number three is based around the belief patterns and the core belief as to why this is here so i'm going to ask you a question and you just tell me the first thing that comes up so if you you have this level of frustration and annoyance with yourself when you have this lack of motivation and procrastination what does that mean about you i'm bloody useless yeah great so can I tell you that that is your core belief and programming that's running in the background, which is why you can't move forward because that is actually running the show. So thank you, useless, useless belief for coming up and showing us that that's what's going on. Now we need to work out where that came from. So if I'm, I'm going to ask you, what's the earliest memory that you have of when you felt useless? I don't have any memories prior to the age of seven, mm -hmm. but at the same time, my intuition tells me that those, that's when it started, but I don't actually have any memory. Yep. And quite frankly, my memory anyway, in general, is quite sketchy. Mm -hmm. It's like Conve I don't want conveniently. to remember things. <laughs> conveniently, probably, yeah. <laughs> so when you say it started at seven, what can you remember about your life around then? Okay, um, I remember because we came, I came to Australia when I turned, well, two weeks after I turned, um, I came to Australia, I turned seven. Mm -hmm. So any sketchy memory is from then on, which was horrific experience for me, okay. you know, back in the 60s, 
didn't speak English, didn't really have family here. Um, just hated it, really. Yeah. About so alone. Yeah. Um, and the word that's kind of coming up is that there's no connection to anything. Mm. Um, so what I'm going to tell you, I think there is more to it, but we'll just see what comes up. Mm. So I'm just going to let you know that from that experience, so, you know, basically you didn't speak English, you had no family, you felt alone and you describe it as being horrific. What you've then, what you've then worked out at the ripe old age of seven is that the situation is useless which then created a perception and the belief that you're useless or you're hopeless around the situation because there's nothing mm. you can do. What mm. then happens is that whenever you try to do something, that program is going to take over because that is the default, what I call the default. So we can say like you've moved here and that is a new experience. And whenever you go into either a new experience or doing something for yourself, the old patterning will then come back in. So the reason why it does that is because your subconscious is just recording what happened and then your conscious mind creates an association around what's happening and then they get stuck together. So whenever, again, you then do something that's new or <laughs> something that you want to do, it's like, no, 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 you're useless and it's hopeless. And so mm. why, why bother, okay? And that's very relevant to what I'm going through at the moment. Perfect. So I just want you to take a nice deep breath and realise that that is what's running the show. It is a programming that you have in there. And in actual fact, it doesn't matter how much you try you will not get anywhere with this programming because it's just like it's hidden in there and you just didn't even know it. So it's not your fault. But the other thing too is that it is also your perception of that is what happened back then. So the great thing about that is that because you created the thoughts and the belief that it's useless and help and helpless or hopeless, that then means that it's very easy to change because you created that in itself. We now need to work with your subconscious and your conscious mind to completely shift the awareness and the connection it's made to new experiences and so forth. Now, obviously, now you're a little bit older. <laughs> your experiences have changed to when you were seven. The thing is, is that your brain has not picked that up. So... I want you to tell me that pretty much after that, obviously you have learned English and you've got great English. <laughs> um, you have, you know, great connections. You are not alone. You have friends and so forth around you and it's, it's all pretty good now, okay? So around new experiences and stepping in, like obviously there was a time where you started to learn English. Obviously there was a time where you started to make friends and it all worked out. So around new experiences, what is the truth? Just tell me the first thing that comes to mind. Oh, scary. That's what I'm getting. It's just that's okay scary, everything. because that's the programming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what that's telling me is because your conscious mind is so strong, it's not going to flip it yet. It's still going to run with that program, which is okay because I'm a little bit smarter than that. <laughs> so what Good. I'm going to do, yeah, none of them to date have ever um, got the best of me. So I welcome the challenge, conscious mind. Thank you. <laughs> So if it's still creating a story that it's scary and that new experiences are scary, again, it's, we have to acknowledge it. We have to acknowledge that that is what it thinks and we have to be okay with it because, you know, the saying what you resist persists. Yep. If, we, if we try and forget about it and you've probably tried to do that, it just makes yeah. it worse. Yeah. <laughs> so let's just sit with the scariness, right? Scariness of a new experience. Just sit with it for a second. What does it feel like? 
I'm getting lightheaded. <laughs> Good. That's shifting. <laughs> That's the energy moving. Yeah. Solar plex is a little bit. Yeah. Churning. That's okay. Let it just be okay with it. And it just feels like it's coming up my throat. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So still sit with it. So I just want you to be okay with it and just say, it's really scary. This new, new experience is there really scary. Like really trigger yourself and let it come up. All these experiences are so scary. <laughs> it's funny, right? <laughs> You'll start to see that the scary will start to change. So what are you feeling now? It is a little bit lighter around my head and my shoulders. Yeah. And I just see myself taking a big step. Yeah. And how does the big step look and feel? You're still scared. That's okay. I want you to be okay with it. Yeah. So see yourself doing it. So as you see yourself taking that big step, what's happening when you're doing it? Oh, I seem to be frozen now in that big step. Yeah, yeah. Um, in this, so in that frozen, so that, that would have been that coping mechanism, which you've created, which was the motivation and procrastination. So again, it's just showing us that is the pattern to just stop and not to do it. <laughs> so in your adult mind, I want you to tell me logically, what is the worst case? Like you tell me what's the worst thing that can happen by you taking a step into this unknown or into this new area? In truth, it's not a big deal. I mean, if, if, if what I want to do doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I can come back, do think different things. So as you're talking, I'm just going to explain, I'm actually burping a lot, which is telling me that this mm. is shifting. So let's just, I'll be, we need to acknowledge that actually your worst fear was if it doesn't work out, but you've just then gone, well, if it doesn't work out, you know, there'll be always other options. There's other choices mm. that come up. So I just want you to take a nice deep breath and acknowledge that. Okay. Now I want you to go back to that visualization of you taking the big step and tell me what happens. Well, the foot's gone down. I'm not frozen anymore. <laughs> now waiting for the other foot to go up and take the other step. Yep. Great. Okay. So just take another deep, deep breath as that shifts. Now I'm going to ask you this question again just to see what this next response is. So when, when you step into new experiences and um, things that you, that, that you know are going to help you to move forward, what, um, what is the truth around this now? If I really want it, I can have it. Great. Now, this is where the advantage comes in. Mm. I knew it would come up somewhere. Mm. If I really want it, mm. I'm not going to let that go. <laughs> okay. So you can actually see that underneath all of that, there was another layer of do I really want it? I'm going to give you a choice. You can either have it or you don't have it. Which one feels better? Have it. Have it. What does it feel like to have it? It feels like my cells are, uh, are buzzing. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a happy feeling. I'm getting excited about it. Um, yeah. Mm. I'm going to be honest and say I'm not getting that. <laughs> mm. 
and I have to trust those feelings because mm. I will, when I get that, then I'll be happy. Um, I think that we can go deeper again to really cement in and give you even bigger buzzing and even bigger excitement. Um, so I'm going to go deeper and say, what, why is it stopping you from wanting it? Like what, why has it stopped you from having it by, like before now? I've just been floating through life. Yeah. Being there for others and not valuing myself. Yeah. But I suppose that comes into, you know, not really trusting myself and not trusting what I want to have. Yeah, that's not trusting what I want to have is actually the thing. So I want you to tell me your earliest memory of when you couldn't trust yourself and couldn't trust others. All my life, I think. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to call that a theme or a life purpose. So before you came down into this body, you said to... God or whoever runs the show, um, I'm going to choose a life where I don't trust myself and don't trust other people. Now, there'll be four reasons, one of four reasons, or even more of two, it could be two or four reasons, but there's always four reasons why we choose an experience. So the first one will be that you just wanted to experience the not trusting. That's because being a soul in a body, you haven't had that experience before. So I just want to experience the not trusting. That's the first option. The second option is to say, um, I need to learn something about myself and my capacity to trust others or to trust myself by, by having that experience. So it's a learning. So you can either have the experience, the learning, the duality. So it's like, I need to have the experience of not trusting myself and others so that when I do have that, um, I will value it and I will be grateful for having it. And that's the duality piece. So that's another reason why that would happen. And the fourth reason is that, again, and you've just said that you'll attract that experience of not trusting yourself and others by um, seeing it in other people and then it's just that constant. So it's definitely the mirror because you're saying it is definitely there, the self and others, but also what you want. So you've got the mirror going on um, and you'll probably find a lot in your life that you will um, come across a lot of people that if there's something you don't like about them or something that irks you about them, it's always um, something you don't like about yourself. So um, they'll align because all the universe does is align energy with energy. So they'll just come into your life to show you something about yourself. Mm. So you can always say when someone's coming into your life, oh, what are they here to show me? Oh, what are they here to show me? <laughs> um, so that is definitely something you've chosen in this life is to bring people in your life to show you something about yourself that you might not already, already know. But you've also chosen the level of um, just having that experience so that you now know if you've had that your whole life, we're going to completely shift that from the awareness that that was what you chose so that then you can now experience in the next half of your life or whatever, the total, not only trusting yourself, others and what you want, but also the process. Mm. Mm. Okay. So I'm going to just allow that to marinate in that you've chosen the not trusting theme um, up until right now, but pretty much I think you've had enough of that. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're going to do what I call ticking it off the spiritual checklist. <laughs> it's like the spiritual bucket list, the spiritual checklist. It's like, I've done that, tick it off. So lack of trust in all these areas. And now what you're going to do just by simply doing that is you're now going to start to, to choose how to trust yourself, trust others, trust the process and trust what you want. Like that you can have that. As I'm saying that, I now believe that you do know that now, that you can have that because in a way when we tick the spiritual bucket list, we are technically changing the contract with yourself. Mm. 
So just take a nice deep breath as you then now, now allow yourself to have the experience of complete and utter trust in all areas from the not having trust. I'm also getting the message that you'll start to be a lot more relaxed around your shoulders and your back. I think you must hold a lot of energy and a lot of yeah. worry in that. Um, so you're going to feel a lot less um, tension in those areas um, and also a lot less worry. Um, if the old default pops up that you do start to worry about anything, you go back to, no, I trust the process. No, I trust. And I think that, I, well, I don't even really think you'll have that issue come up unless if there's another layer underneath it. But I feel like because we've ticked it off that it's, it's all good. So um, how does that all feel? Fantastic. <laughs> Now, when it comes down to motivation and procrastination, I want you to use this as your new de default because with your old default, you would, just, you would just go into doing nothing. Your new yeah. default is that when you have, I can already feel your drive and energy like wanting to get into it. <laughs> so I, I can really feel it. So, so this is where when you have um, something that you want to do, whether it's, you know, go on an exercise regime, eating better or whatever, I want you every day to step into your level of choice. So what I mean by that is saying I can choose to eat badly or I can choose to eat well. Mm. You have the complete choice. If you do decide one day to eat badly, you own that and that's okay and you're okay with it. There won't be any beating yourself up when you go, yep, I'm actually okay with that. Can you feel the difference? Yeah. Now, even going into exercise, okay, exercise or no exercising. Well, I kind of know I feel better when I exercise. So I'm just going to choose exercising. So, and you keep doing that with everything. So whether you've got a project you want to do or something else that you want to do, you go, well, I can either do it or I don't do it. What feels better? And you'll always choose the one that's in alignment with who you are. As soon as you make the choice, it then, I don't know why, but somehow there's just a level of, I need to do something about that right now. Mm, mm. As soon as you make that choice. There is no delaying as soon as you make that choice. You end up just going, okay, so what is the first step? What do I need to do? You don't even have to think about it. You just receive it and the thought will come through and then you just act on it. Yep. Okay. So what we've just done is we've just gotten rid of um, the connection that you have around new experiences and doing something for yourself. Um, it's okay. It, it just all started from when you were younger and you just created a perception around that, that that was what was true. Now we've given you a new truth, which is what I call the universal truth, <laughs> which is absolutely true. Um, and then also going into um, just that, that what, if you want to call it a life theme or life purpose around trust. And that, um, that's really going to help you as well with your motivation and so forth because you'll be able to trust yourself mm. a lot more to move forward. Mm. Mm. There you go. That makes sense. Yeah. Of course it does. Yeah. So what you can do now is you can create, just to take you through each day, is you can create a little bit of a mantra for yourself as to what is going to be your new life mantra or your new way of being. Um, so what would you like that to be? Mm. Something like I now move forward with ease and flow or. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm. Use that one. With ease, joy and glory. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you need to write that down and put it everywhere. <laughs> Now move forward yeah Got it. yeah take a nice deep breath as you cement that in and just soak that in now you put that on your phone you put that on your mirrors you put everything and I'm also being told if you can take because you tend to have a busy mind and a busy well, actually, just mm. a busy mind. To be honest, your life doesn't have to be as busy as it is because it's your mind that's making you busy. So what I can get you to do is just bring yourself back into the current moment and spend even just 10 minutes of doing nothing. Mm. 
and just slow yourself down. What will happen is that you actually do slow down time and you can get more things done. Um, soon over time, your busy mind will start to relax and it won't be going, you know, 10 to the dozen. I mean, you know yourself when you're thinking about something, time just flows and you feel so busy. But then if you clear your mind and you've got nothing in there, it's like freedom, really. <laughs> mm. So even just saying, I don't need to think anymore, I don't need to do any of that, I can just receive whatever information I need to know about what I need to do, and then you just mm. do that in that current moment and that's all you need to do. Mm. This is from someone who doesn't think. <laughs> <laughs> so any questions? No, I've got... I understand what you're saying and I'm really getting it, you know. Mm. I mean, I, I think I already knew anyway. Of course it's that, like it's that busy mind i just you know i even wake up in the middle of the night and my mind is going even though i've just woken up but yeah. the mind is still going whatever was happening in the dream or whatever it still yeah. continues yeah so definitely that is a big challenge for me well so we can say it was into... yeah you can say it was a challenge for you because you don't want it to be a challenge from now on again you create create right. your own reality so you can say it was a challenge and what you now, again, make a choice. Do I have a busy mind or no busy mind? Like, again, it's pretty easy which one you'll choose. So then you actually then say, I'm going to have a clear mind. I'm not going to think anything. I'm only going to focus on what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. The busy mind, if I can go into another layer, is from a lack of, of or a perceived lack of, having, of not having control. Um, but if you then go into flow and trust and ease, mm -hmm. Um, you will then always know that in actual fact control is decided and determined in the very second that we're in because there is no such thing as past. Past has already happened. So, and there is the, uh, the, the future hasn't happened yet, so that doesn't even exist. So the only thing that exists is right now. So if right now exists, we have complete control in right now because we can do whatever we want in this current moment. So that is where you need to just keep telling your brain what we do right now is the only thing that we are going to control and this is all we need to do. We don't need to do anything else. So if you're in bed and your mind starts, you go, excuse me, I'm actually only supposed to be sleeping right now. I'm not meant to be doing anything else. Shut up. <laughs> Over time, it'll stop and you'll start getting used to it. If you've got things that, you know, to-do lists or anything like that, make sure you write them down before you go to bed um, and con continually write down everything that's in your head so you have nothing in there. You can even have conversations mm. with yourself, which is awesome. Have a, like, instead of like for journaling, you can just have a conversation with yourself and get that head Get it out. You'll probably find you've got a backlog for now because you've been trying to, you know, avoid it. But get it all out, have the conversation, bring it all out to the surface and then decide to have nothing in there because you know from mm. a soul level that you'll be okay. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And then you just stay in the current moment and then whatever you do in this current moment determines your next moment. So you've got to get into action right now. Mm. but it's it's inspired action it's aligned action and it's not trying to do 20 things at once it's one thing mm. which will then create and that's action. my problem yeah i try and do too many things was your problem or have so <laughs> many things in, so many things that i want to do and then because it becomes so overwhelming yeah i don't do anything and that's why your brain, your brain can't, it's trying to do it all. It, you know, give it some credit. It's trying, right? Just, that is just not how it works. Mm. It can only do one thing at a time. You can only do one thing at a time. Well, mm. so bring everything back to now, because if you're trying to do more than one thing at a time, as you said, you've experienced and you can say, this mm. is part of my spiritual checklist and my spiritual bucket list. I've experienced that busyness and I've actually worked out that that doesn't work. So I'm going to tick that off and have the opposite. Mm, yep. Ease and flow, complete clarity, yep. have nothing. To be honest, like I actually consider myself quite smart and I can have access to anything in the whole universe, but I actually don't think. 
it's just when you stop thinking and stop trying to control things and you receive what you need to know, gosh, it's so much easier. Mm. Mm. So much easier. And you just have fun. <laughs> it's all fun. So, but you've got to play around with all this. So, yes. so see how you go. Um, and we've got this recording that you can have a listen back to. And I'll also you. send you through this process, that the universal mindset process where you keep coming back to what is the issue and then what is the truth? What is the issue? What is the truth? And finding out what belief system is in there that's driving the show. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you can continue this right. at home. Sounds fantastic. Awesome stuff. So I'll send that all through to you and keep me posted on how you're going, okay? Thank you. My Thank pleasure, you for today. darling. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.